When you're a small channel like me, you need to make sure that whatever content you put out is as top tier as possible. Obviously, I'm not gonna have the same equipment as a channel like Linus Tech Tips, but just because I can't afford to spend 30 grand on an 8K RED camera, doesn't mean that you, the viewer, should suffer with bad video, or even worse, bad audio. That's why when I first started making videos, one of the first things I bought was this, the Power Device Professional Grade Lapel Mic. It was cheap, coming in around 22 bucks, and it did a good job, however, it was wired, and as you can imagine, being tethered to your camera kind of limits your ability to get shots or do some shooting. I wanted a wireless mic, but I was really hesitant about shelling out 480 ducks on like a wireless solution from somebody like Sennheiser. What I did end up getting though, was this. This is the Go Mic Mobile from Samsung, and that's what we're gonna be looking at today. So when you buy the Go Mic Mobile, what all are you gonna get? Well, you're gonna get a variety of mounting solutions such as Velcro fasteners, bracket arms, quarter inch by 20 adapters, and a shoe mount. You'll get a power adapter, you'll get the Samsung belt pack transmitter with omnidirectional lavalier microphone with mini XLR connection. You're gonna get the Samsung dual channel receiver, a variety of cables to connect all your different devices. And lastly, you're gonna get this little neat little carrying case that's actually quite nice. So let's look at the belt pack transmitter. On the top, you're gonna to find the mini XLR connection port for the lavalier mic, a power and pairing switch, and a status indicator light. On the front, underneath the battery cover, you're gonna find obviously two standard AA batteries and a gain control. And also there's like one little plastic screwdriver under there that's used basically to adjust your gain switch, which I thought was like a nice little touch. If we go back to the topic and look at how the transmitter works, it's quite simple. You turn the unit on and off by pressing the one and only button. If you press it for less than five seconds, it's, it's gonna to toggle the unit on and off. If you need to pair the device to a new transmitter, you're gonna press and hold this button for more than five seconds to enter pairing mode. You might also notice that when the unit is on but not connected to a receiver, the indicator light is gonna be an amber color. When the unit is connected to a receiver and ready to use, the light will turn green. Now let's look at the receiver where there's a little more going on. On the front side is a rubber coated button that's gonna be used to toggle the unit on and off and enter pairing mode. It works just the same as the transmitter. Um, press it less than five seconds to toggle on and off. And if you hold it for more than five seconds, you're gonna enter pairing mode. Next we have the analog output select switch. Output one and two are used for connecting to smartphone TRRS headset inputs, whereas the headphone little picture there is used for connecting to things like cameras, mixers, and headphones. The volume control does exactly what it says. It controls the volume of the outgoing audio to whatever receiving device this uh, receiver is sending its audio signal to. The mix two channel switch sets the receiver's audio output to either mixed mono or split left and right. On the top, there's two indicator lights that let you know what channel the receiver is paired on. When the light is lit up and white, it lets you know that the unit is paired correctly and that what channel it's on. Um, if your audio for the transmitter or the receiver is clipping, it'll flash red. Next that you have a battery indicator light that does what battery indicator lights do. And then next to that, you have a power indicator light that lets you know the unit is on. Also, you're gonna notice like a little hand screw that's used just to tighten up the mounting arms. And the mounting arms are used to clamp this unit to say something like your cell phone. On the left side, you have three IO ports, a USB audio out, a standard 3.5 millimeter jack audio out, and a USB charging port. The battery life on both the receiver and transmitter are rated at 20 hours, but only the receiver is rechargeable. So when you're trying to 20 hours are up on your transmitter, you gotta put some new batteries in it. The stated working range of this unit is 100 feet or 30 minutes, and that is obviously dependent upon line of sight. So if you got a bunch of trees between you or a wall that might go down. So I use this mic in every video, and what do I think? And to be honest, it works perfect for me. I mean, I'm one guy, I'm a small channel, so for me, it, it delivers exactly what I need it to. I mean, obviously, if you had more than one person you needed to mic up, this might not be the best solution for you. Also, I wouldn't say that this thing is actually cheap. I mean, obviously, it doesn't cost 480 ducks, but it is $199.99 for the unit I have here. But all that aside, when it comes to just being a dependable mic, it does deliver. It's extremely easy to use and you just plug it in, you turn it on and it works. And that's probably the main reason I like it. So over the last few months of using this thing, the only issue I've actually had with it is like interference caused by my camera's Wi-Fi. So I use the Canon M50 for my, for my YouTube videos. And one of the features of this camera is it has built in Wi-Fi. You can turn it on and control the camera through your smartphone. But I did notice that if I use this mic and I turn the Wi-Fi on, the audio signal is just Filthy. You can't hear anything. It basically makes anything you record with the Wi-Fi on unusable. I'll give you a little hint. So here's here's the mic with the Wi-Fi on my camera on, just so you can see how it works. All right. So now we're connected via Wi-Fi to my phone, so we can control the camera with our phone here, which is a cool feature. But if you can uh, hear me at all, you're gonna know that the audio sounds absolutely trash. So it's just it's just too much interference. So anything that you record when the uh, Wi-Fi is on is just kind of ruined. So it's best to use no Wi-Fi with this mic. 
But that's the only issue I've had. And if you don't use Wi-Fi on your camera, then it's not gonna be a problem. And maybe if you have a different camera and you use Wi-Fi, it might not be an issue, but just be aware that it could be. And if you use the M50 and you use Wi-Fi, it's just not gonna work. So if you're looking for a reasonably cheap wireless microphone that just works, and it works with your camera's external mic, it works with your smartphones, anything you really get cord on, then I would definitely recommend checking out the Samsung Go Mic Mobile. I mean, it works for me, it's really easy, you just turn it on and it works, and that's the reason I like it. So I would recommend it if you're looking for a wireless mic solution. But hey, as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button, and also consider getting subscribed on your way out because, you know, without you, there's no channel. It's just, just a guy making videos by himself, which is weird. Also, if you like the content of my channel and you want to help out support the channel in any way, check out my Patreon page in the link down below, and we'll see you in the next one.